What is a tree you have that is both a great gift and a great curse? A good listener. I'm actually not that good at making small talk. I don't really have a problem with interacting with others, but most often I don't have much to say. But it turns out that makes me a good listener. But sometimes I don't want to talk or listen. I just want quiet. But I've thrown myself into a corner as the guy who doesn't talk much but listens and nods agreeingly all the time. Makes for awkward moments for me sometimes. Resting B face. I don't tend to get bothered by creepy people when I'm out and about, but I also don't tend to make friends easily. Most women don't like me when they meet me and most men do. I have always had a bad case of RBF and I think women respond to it more. I usually think things over thoroughly before doing something, but on the other hand, I overthink too much and end up being unnecessarily anxious paranoid. At work we call that analysis paralysis. I have aphantasia. Basically, I don't see visual images in my head. If you say picture a cat, there's nothing. My dreams very rarely visual. When I'm reading, if the author is describing a landscape or an outfit, I can't picture it. But this also means if someone is telling a really gross story, like Swamps of Dagobah, it doesn't gross me out near so much as other people. I can't imagine what this must be like. Sensory processing issues. I notice minor things around me really well, a little too well, to the point where I can't function if something is making a noise that it shouldn't, or a feature is slightly askew. Makes me a really good troubleshooter with machines, but a very distracted human. Yep, and it's not even all the time for me, a clock ticking on the wall can keep from going to sleep. I have very very thin fingernails. On the one hand, they feel very sharp. I've actually cut myself a number of times accidentally, so they're the best at scratching heads and backs. I swear half the reason my husband married me is because I have the best back scratches. But my nails break constantly. I can't grow them out at all or else they end up breaking off close to the skin. I can use them to open things because they just bend. This is my favorite response so far. I love how everyone else is talking about personality traits, and you're here like, my dang fingernails, though, p.s., my fingernails are the same way. I have a very vivid imagination which is great for writing. It really sucks if you have high anxiety and tend to worry a lot. Reading about illnesses for example can lead my thoughts to a downward spiral where I pretty much plan my funeral before I even realize what's happening. I am very similar, I can be so amazing in my creative writing, but anxiety and nightmares can be so miserable with the extent my imagination goes sometimes. Hang in there friend. I'm great at reading the little signs that indicate someone's emotions, especially negative ones. However I then go on to extrapolate it to being caused by me in some way, and I either worry quietly about it for way longer than I should, or I go into damage control mode. I feel like I'm pretty perceptive to the moods of others, including non-verbal cues, but I'm somehow also socially clueless when it comes to interacting with others. My friend once said to me, your biggest strength is that you're a go-getter, your biggest weakest is also that you're a go-getter, you get yourself so high and then slam yourself into the ground. Rinse, repeat, I have the tray of a bouncy ball. Not sure if describing hard work or an awkward metaphor about drug addiction. I'm very quiet. Pros. Helps being sneaky and keeping myself calm. Cons. Fade into the background a lot and get talked over like you wouldn't believe. I freaking hate getting talked over and when you finally try to make your voice heard you're called rude for interrupting even though they've interrupted you the past 5 times you tried to speak. Being a very light sleeper. On the one hand, it makes it really easy to wake up on time to do things. On the other hand, if I can get more than 6 hours of sleep I'm lucky. How my girlfriend used to get mad she couldn't surprise me with a wake up kiss, because her foot slightly creaking the wood near the door would wake me up. I need sleep man. Despite being an introvert, my first reaction to meeting people is to be friendly, smile, cheerful greeting, active listening, etc. Great for customer service. Great for my students, bad because people think I want to talk to them when all it is is an instinctive fear response. Lull predator into false of sense of safety and escape. It came to say something similar. I'm an introvert as well, but I'm a great conversationalist. 
I can make small talk entertaining for almost everybody but I sometimes exhaust myself way too quickly in social situations. Being good at computers, it means I get to have a great job but in my hometown I am the neighborhood PC repair guy and I am too polite to say no. For this reason, I have somehow become tech repair guy for my in-laws. Perfect pitch. As cool as it is to point out what note the fridge is humming at, it hurts when instruments musicians are the slightest bit out of key with each other. Piano tuners cost a tone to hire. My laziness. Because of the sheer amount of laziness I have I do everything in a way that minimizes the amount of work that needs to be done. Which also helps a lot with actual things I have to do, since I'm good at finding the most efficient solution. However because of it, I absolutely hate working. So I start everything probably later than I should have and I stress about the fact that I probably should be working. It doesn't hinder me doing what I have to do. I never procrastinated that much, and I'm more dutiful than lazy, so I do get everything done. But it does make me feel a lot worse. My body changes stupid quick. Like a few weeks of physical labor work bulk me up like I'm about to go hunt gazelle for the tribe, but a few weeks sitting on my butt makes it all go away, and then I start packing on fat like I got an insider tip about the next ice age. A few years ago I had a bike delivery job and was the leanest and most muscular I'd ever been. Got a desk job afterwards and put on 30 pounds. Got a job in a kitchen after that. Lost the 30 quick. Next job was unloading freight from trucks. Put on 10 pounds of muscle but slimmed down like I totally stopped eating. Definitely a blessing and a curse. Now I operate a forklift. And all my genes are getting tight and I'm growing a solid and farm of a gut. Son of a bee. Maybe I should just get a job making gravel or hauling firewood or something. But who would then I would get bored of that and move on. The cycle continues. My sense of smell I'd really bad. Generally it really sucks because I can't smell a lot of great smells, but I work in a lab that uses a ton of ethanol. To everyone in the lab I have a superpower because the ethanol just doesn't bother me. The worst part is always having to find someone else to determine if your food is still okay. I have a really great memory. It's fantastic when I can use it to retell a great story, but then it's also a curse because it can weird people out that you remember random little things from years ago. I remember stupid and completely pointless facts and little details, and then people act like I'm a creep for remembering that sort of crap. It kind of pisses me off because I can never remember anything that matters though. Ungodly reflexes, especially when it comes to catching things falling flying. I'm referring to the ones not done by choice which has resulted in many interesting catches, including the good, a fly mid-flight when startled, bowl and clump of cold mac and cheese, separately, children falling off couch, dog falling off bed while nearly asleep, light bulb, baseball without glove, pillows that my family throws at me when not looking to test these reaction speeds, bird that flew by too close, sister when she passed out, the bad, wasp, cicada color, glowy orange thing at the bottom of an oven preheated to 350 degrees, a soft pellet, that welt was awful, cup of hot coffee which spilled anyway, cat attempting to pounce in pitch black darkness, grabbed a butterfly in the dark which hurt its wing and I felt horrible the next week. Some people have abilities with emotions some people are shields, they are sometimes aloof to others emotions as they can reflect emotions, away from them. Some act as amplifiers, if you're angry and in their presence, they can make you more angry, or if you're happy, they can amplify that and make you feel really good just by being in their presence. Then you have me I'm a sink, I can pull emotions off of people and comfort people. I'm very good at reading emotions too which I credit for my ability to work with mentally handicapped children. I remember one girl who was incredibly autistic and deemed antisocial because she couldn't even stand her parents really touching her and she was very active. However whenever I came along she'd have to sit right up against me, holding my hand and she would be calm to the world. This can be a good thing in that I'm more or less the only one that can comfort my mom and sister which is becoming more and more necessary because my father is an emotionally abusive donghead. But the issue that brings is, it takes me a long freaking time to process that energy and it affects me. Someone sad and dumps it on me. I can get upset and depressed. 
Someone is angry and yells at me. I can become irritated and pissy. If someone is annoyed I get anxious. I'm also hyper tuned to everyone's emotions and it makes things difficult because it's not an exact science. An example is how I will know if someone else is annoyed or upset. But I can't tell with what and me being me. My first assumption is that person is upset with me. An emotional sponge of sorts. I'm a hard worker and I set high standards for myself. The problem is I'm always held to this standard by others and it's apparent once I slip up as it's usually not as accepted as when someone else would. It also makes group work hard because I tend to put that standard on my group by proxy. Being taller than 6 feet tall. It's great for reaching crap on high shelves and generally people regard height as some sort of achievement. But I live in Asia and I've knocked my head so many times I probably have had more time with a bruise on my head than not. Not to mention long flights are killer. Amen brother. The perks are real but man do I hate squeezing into a car plane anything built for normal sized people. Also finding shoes is a real bee. HSP. I'm overly aware of my surroundings. Door squeaking. The rattle of AC turning on. The ice machine turning on. People walking upstairs. Opening my door when I'm asleep will always wake me up. Air currents put pressure on my ears. Drafts can drive me insane as they slowly crawl across my skin. Because I notice so many details it becomes hard to focus. Also haunted houses are not often fun as I can hear the actors where they're hiding. You'd make a great hockage. I'm high sensory. I can smell and hear much more than others and get so distracted and overwhelmed by sounds and smells. I love my earplugs so much. They make large meetings bearable. They block out so much extra noise and leave behind the voices. I'm great at giving people mental support and helping them with advice but it makes me feel like I'm not doing well enough. I'm really good at focusing my mental energy and thinking abstractly. Problem is, I forget to live in the real world and take care of myself. Being incredibly logical over emotional. I've actually been called names like monster and robotic for not feeling the way everyone else does about things. When I was a toddler, I wouldn't cry over dead pets because I saw no purpose in it. Moving on from things that typically traumatize others like abuse, bullying, and death has always been very easy. This also makes finding motivation challenging. It's hard to develop purpose without emotion, and it's something I'm working on, successfully, but slowly. This isn't to say I don't have emotions, just that they are often dormant while logic shines brightly. Never being satisfied with my accomplishments. On the one hand, I have lived a life of continuous betterment of myself, and have worked hard to achieve my goals. But on the other hand, I always feel like I'm not doing enough and that I'm not living up to my full potential. As a child I was bullied by my family. I'd get bullied in school then come home to be made fun of for it. I always thought home was where you were loved. Now that I'm an adult, I've developed thick skin. Plus I tend to say things that others won't. The difference now is, I don't care if it hurts someone or not. I've learned to tone that down but when one of them decides to lay into me verbally, I respond in kind and people get hurt. All of a sudden I'm the jerk. I had a similar childhood but to the opposite effect. I stopped talking and learned to blend into the background. But that also means that I've become a ninja and I can easily slip in and out of places unnoticed. My background is in engineering but I'm a jack of all trades. Learned how to remodel homes, fix cars, fix computers, etc. Guess whose phone goes off every weekend with a small request to get help. I'm the same way but I've avoided that problem by having no friends who live nearby. Plenty of time to tinker. I'm interested in a whole lot of topics and can absorb information rapidly. It makes me rather knowledgeable in a lot of different areas, but doesn't let me become an expert in any. I'm fairly charming and funny and can make people laugh in pretty much any situation. I'm this way because I fear actual honest interaction. I am happy in literally any situation, which causes me to stay in a lot of bad jobs relationships because, meh, I'm always happy. It isn't until I get out of said situations that I'm like, why the frick did I put up with that for so long? Always wanting the best decision, on everything. 
It's good that I always think about things very thoroughly before doing anything, so I can make the best decisions. But I freaking hate that when it's not this guaranteed thing and I just keep thinking about it and end up just thinking about it too much instead of just saying frick it and see the results after. So many little regrets that I have because of this. I'm not bothered by being alone. It makes it less painful to kill time when I have nothing going on but it also makes me bad at making friends because I feel less motivated to do so. Insomnia. It's great in one sense cause I have more time to work. And I am better functioning on less sleep than other people. But I'm tired all the time. Struggle to sleep every night. And really struggle to sleep in unfamiliar environments. Sounds like you're not functioning that well at all. I can switch up my emotions so dang fast. If I am mad at someone I'll talk crap about it but in the middle of talking I'll be like oh crap. This is wrong you need to understand the person and I'll backtrack and apologize but I'll start again if I am riled up and calm down again. Same with being happy and crying sad. Hot. I am horribly empathic. To the point that I am constantly experiencing emotions that are not my own and having to remain very aware of what I am feeling as opposed to what those around me are feeling. It's a gift because it helps me connect with all types of people but a curse because I have to work very hard to keep my emotions in check. Being a natural leader. You can help things run real smooth but it can be hard to let others try things when you know the right way or a better way. Much harder to step down from leadership after power than to step up into it. Adding to this, hard to step down, and eventually people just assume that you'll always be the one managing everything all the time. This gets really exhausting. Very great memory, sadly does not apply to studies. I remember conversations and actions which happened years ago, which is nice, but on the other side, I can't forget stuff I wish I never heard or knew. Wanna switch with me? I can barely remember what I had for breakfast, but if you show me 2 minutes of a show I saw 5 years ago, I can tell you the plot of the episode. I have little to no emotional intelligence. I've been described as cold, robotic, emotionless, inhuman. I simply don't understand how or why people allow their feelings to control them. Influence, maybe, if it's a matter of opinion or preference. But on things that matter, I'll take cold rationality every time. I am very musically inclined. Tuffed myself guitar bass drums keyboard. I can hear songs and within a minute transcribe it into all of its instruments. The curse is that's all I have going for me and I suck horribly at everything else in life as this will literally get me nowhere. Humor. Usually when a girl tells a guy he's funny, she's into him. If you're actually funny, however, she laughs because she actually does think you're funny. No, she doesn't want to do the horizontal hokey pokey. Stubbornness. It's not easy to persuade me to do something I don't want to. It saved me from making some mistakes, but also lost me some good opportunities. I stop and consider questions carefully, which leads some people to think there's something wrong with me. What? You can't answer a simple question the thing is, it's often not a simple question. It's just that a quick, simple answer is all they want, even if it's probably wrong. I was born with crazy hypermobility and double jointedness. Plus side, I can bend in impossible ways, great for party tricks. Wiggling ferret like out of tight spaces and fun bedroom antics. It also sort of cancels out what would have otherwise been a debilitating back problem. Bad side. My normal single joints can dislocate very easily. And whilst it's no issue popping them back in, it hurts a lot. Also aforementioned bad back is like kryptonite to my hypermobility. Instead of being a lasty girl I'm just the weirdo who can dislocate her fingers on demand. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.